It is not a secret that COP26 is a failure. It should be obvious that we cannot solve a crisis with the same methods that got us into it in the first place. What we want, climate justice! Neither Canada nor the rest of the world are on track to meet their climate targets. We are here to reject false climate solutions. Currently, the world is 1.1 degrees warmer than in pre-industrial times. In the 2015 Paris Agreement, countries agreed to enhance their climate promises every five years to stop global warming and offer new emissions targets known as nationally determined contributions. These would help cap the global rise in temperature well below 2 degrees, ideally at 1.5 degrees Celsius. But climate scientists say the pledges at COP26 just aren't enough to accomplish that. If we follow current pledges and targets put forward by countries, emissions will rise by 13.7% in 2030 relative to 2010 levels. And we know from the available science, those need to fall by 50%. So we're still headed in the wrong direction. The world will most likely miss its climate targets. If that happens, is all lost? And what is the point of setting targets anyway, if most aren't reached? A new study on the impact of countries' most recent climate pledges estimates there is a 34% chance of limiting the global rise in temperature to 2 degrees. And we're even less likely to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees. There's a 1.5% chance of that. And what we need are strong, near-term commitments by countries to put us in the right direction. Still, the study says these numbers are a big improvement compared to 2015 promises. The 2015 pledges only had an 8% chance of capping global warming at 2 degrees, and no chance at all of lowering it to 1.5. This is why climate scientists say setting new targets every few years is important. It's hard to imagine we would have all of uh, the action that we're seeing now of countries coming to the table and really you know, bringing to the table real increased ambition if we didn't have something like the Paris mechanism. According to modeling, if countries keep increasing their ambitions beyond 2030, the probability of staying below 2 degrees rises to 67%, and there's an 18% chance of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees. Take Canada, for example. The country pitched new emissions goals to the UN this year. Our new climate target for 2030 is to reduce our 2005 emission levels by 40 to 45%. This was an upgrade from the country's 2015 commitment to reduce emissions by 30%. Canada also committed to reducing its emissions to net zero by 2050. This means reaching a point where the amount of greenhouse gases produced and the amount removed from the atmosphere cancel each other out. The best thing is that it's definitely possible to get to a net zero point, uh, but it comes with important caveats. One being, we shouldn't make short-term decisions to reduce emissions because they can quickly become obsolete when trying to reach net zero. An example is, if we chose to transition vehicles to natural gas to cut transportation emissions, it would take time to build the infrastructure needed for that transition. Researchers say this would help us reduce emissions significantly and even reach our 2030 reduction goals, but the infrastructure would be useless after 2030. Now you're thinking about the mid-century net zero point. You have to eliminate the emissions completely from the sector. And so you have to eliminate the emissions from the burning of natural gas. So all decisions for technologies must be made while keeping the eye on the ball, which is a net zero objective. So when countries frequently miss their climate targets, does that mean they're setting them too high? Climate experts say no. Targets are based on science. It's a way of saying, Here's what we need to do independently of the challenges that it creates for any given country. And then we can strategize on the implications of the targets and of course on the best ways to get there. And would penalizing countries for missing their goals help? I don't think that using penalties is the right kind of motivation in a multilateral environment. I think it's really about cooperation. It's about coming to a common agreement and finding ways to work together. The punitive approach was sort of tried in the past and has failed, be it Kyoto, be it Cancun, be it, be it other agreements. Having goals and targets makes this all sound like a game that we'll either win or lose. 
But climate experts say we shouldn't think that way. The difference in impacts across the globe between two degrees and one and a half are already drastic and significant. We're talking significant amounts of sea level rise uh, for small island nations. We're talking about significant increase in extreme weather events. But then again, every increment of warming we prevent will reduce these impacts. Think of it more of a, of a marathon where you're trying to set your personal best. We're not racing others, we're racing the clock wanting to set that personal best as low as we can get it.